Hello viewers of Biotechnica, this is Caroline Green. Today's video is going to be about what is going to be the scope of biotech industry globally. Yes, you might be wondering, I have taken biotechnology uh, as a bachelor's degree or as a master's degree or you might be pursuing your PhD in biotechnology, whatever it is. You might be wondering whether this biotechnology field is going to be a booming field or is it not going to be a booming field in the upcoming years or in the upcoming 10 or 20 years. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about is biotechnology worthy enough or does it has any future scopes globally, worldwide? We're going to talk about it. So let's talk about the complete topic in detail. So first, let's move on to the global market scenario. So how this biotechnology industry globally the market is going to be and how about in India? If you are a graduate from India, you might be wondering, will I get a job in India as a biotechnology fresher or a graduate? So I'm going to talk about that also in detail. So first, let's talk about how is this global biotechnology market is going to be. So the market size value in approximately by 2022 was US dollars of 1.372 billion. And the growth rate is estimated to be around 13.9 percentage increase is going to happen from 2022 to 2030, which means this is definitely going to be a wonderful field that you can opt for. I'm going to show you a survey which talks about the US biotechnology market. So you can see here, if we talk in case of DNA sequencing, nanobiotechnology, tissue engineering and regeneration, fermentation technology, cell-based assay, PCR technology, chromatography and many, many others. If you see from 2020, there is actually because of all these uh, technology, there is a little bit growth which has taken place, which is almost 2, 8 to 6.1 million US dollars. But if you see gradually, it is expected that by 2030, there is a gradual increase in 13.9 percentage, which is approximately DNA sequencing. If you see from here, it is actually very, very huge, which means if you're going to learn NG, is it's very good enough for you because you can take up the market by 2023 so I'm going to talk about these techniques also so this is one of the thing which shows you that what are the techniques you should be aware of of course you need to know about DNA sequencing and of course when we talk in case of drug delivery nanotechnology along with biotechnology is going to be very very wonderful so you can take up nanobiotechnology and of course tissue engineering when it comes to plant or animal tissue engineering and tissue regeneration that's what we'll be talking about regenerative medicines and of course if anybody wanted to go for fermentation industry then you have to know about the fermentation bioreactors and all the cell based assay if you're going to know it PCR technology of course we know it's very nice and all the chromatographic techniques if you're going to know it then definitely by 2030 there is definitely going to be a greater market of biotechnology technology globally I can say so first let's talk about why this growing food hold has taken place how this is uh, created a cre great uh, application oriented process when it talks in case of biotechnology so we started having personalized medicine so we started providing a personalized medicine to a particular patient if we we won't use a common medicine which is universally used for all of them nowadays we started giving a personalized medicine according to the person's body Body. And then drug formulation, often drug formulation, we started doing it. And mRNA vaccines, yes, we started having this mRNA vaccine. This is an analysis which talks about all the application. And because of COVID-19, of course, you can little bit see there is a vast difference than before. So by 2021, if you're going to talk in case of COVID-19, we believe that 11 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines were produced globally. 11 billion doses. If you just imagine how the vaccination is done, half of the world population vaccine has been manufactured within a year which is really an amazing thing. How this half of the population's vaccines are done within one year when we were struggling a bit hard before to get a vaccine for all the people for so long, like five, six years. But how we made it a bit possible within one year because of biotechnology, yes. So COVID-19 has also given one promise that biotechnology can definitely be a promising future in the upcoming days. So these are the some, uh, some of the things that makes us realize that yes biotechnology is is going to be definitely a booming field and this has created a new avenue for the biotechnology also now there is always going to be a rising demand for biotechnology tools so that's what we 
as a biotechnologist it's really really important that you learn techniques and some bioinformatics tools also when we talk in case of agriculture how these tools are actually helpful so when we talk in case of agriculture micropropagation we started going for and molecular breedings and of course tissue culturing and conventional plant breeding and development of genetically modified crops yes we already know that genetically modified crops have been done before and because of biotechnology this has taken up the market so when we talk in case of medicines or when we talk in case of agriculture when we talk in case of health sector whatever it is biotechnology has always played a major role in it so we can definitely say global biotechnology market is always going to be greater in the upcoming years now the next question comes for us is I am a student from India. What about Indian scenario? So I am going to talk about it. When we talk in case of the biotechnology growth rate annually, twenty percentage annual rate is there, but we can expect by twenty twenty five, the US dollars hundred billion increase is going to take place. Which means not only globally, even in India, we can see a maximum growth in the biotechnology sectors because these are mainly going to happen because of the contributions provided by a lot of multinational companies. and research institute in our country so definitely india is no exception there is going to be a booming in the biotechnology also now let's talk about why there is a rising demand for biotechnology we already know there are a lot of developments and advancement in science and technology is taking place so there is a rise of demand in biotechnology but to be very specific i'm going to talk about some of the important uh, new adventures that has taken place here so let's talk about the complete thing first is going to be genetic modification as i already told you we started using gmos so genetically modified crops organism we started using even though it has some disadvantages it also has some advantages so we started producing crops herbicide resistant uh, plants and disease resistant plants we started manufacturing so definitely biotechnology uh, can take a control in the agriculture field also and tissue culture technology either in animal tissue culture or plant tissue culture and tissue engineering we started engineering all the tissues accordingly and because of the biotechnology only and we started producing lot of regenerative medicines when we talk in case of gene therapy which is the advanced version of most of the diseases and cell cell therapies we started using cell therapy also so i'm going to show you a uh, a survey which talks about the regenerative medicines you can see so companies started developing a lot of cell and gene therapies raised over almost us dollars of 23 billion investment in 2021 and we believe it is going to increase it a lot of times than before and people started using crispr which is an indication that we need definitely need to learn crispr technology so we need to learn ngs we need to learn crispr which is very very important so they started using this crispr treatments along with the cell and gene therapy uh, by using some of the techniques and they started uh, treating some of the chronic diseases like cancer diabetes age related macular de degenerations and almost all forms of arthritis they started using so whether you wanted to go in for research in any of the fields it's always good enough that you learn gene therapy you learn some ngs you learn uh, crispr all these things and completely so that whatever it is by 2020 2030 or 2025 we can expect all this advancement taking place so it's always good enough that you learn and developing pipeline products so we started producing a lot of pipeline products for diabetes uh, neuro disorders like parkinsons alzheimers and even for cancers and lot of cardiovascular diseases we started producing so because of this things we can believe that there is always a demand for biotechnology in the upcoming years and not only that the wastewater processing we started doing it and fermentation technology is no exception to this one and of course car t and tcr t cell therapies immunological therapies we started using which is considered as a very potential treatment options for lot of viral infections like hiv even sars cov2 and hepatitis b so whatever it is when we talk in case of the previous scenario starting from the genetic modified crops until now when we talk in case of sars cov2 always biotechnology has played an important role so there is always going to be a rising demand for biotechnology next what are the biotechnology techniques that are going to be helpful so we have a video separately on it but i'm going to talk about the advancement that has happened recently for now stem cell therapy yes 
Stem cell therapy is definitely an amazing field where you can literally see a lot of wonderful things that's happening. And of course, DNA fingerprinting used for many, many purposes like paternity and genetic engineering and molecular cloning and nanobiotechnology. Yes, we know about all these things. I'm going to talk about this nanobiotechnology a little bit more. This nanobiotechnology, you can see it is considered that it's going very, very faster from 2022 to 2030. Nanobiotechnology, it's not a nanotechnology. 14.8% we believe there is going to be a gradual improve over there and people started using this for many diagnostic purposes also and uh, factors such as low toxicity we started using drugs but there is a problem that we cannot deliver the generic drugs very easily there is a conventional route of administering these drugs but there are certain reasons the drugs cannot enter into the specific locations so we started using nanoparticles such as low toxicity and they are very very small size and they have a very chemical plasticity of nanoparticle. So these three main properties like low toxicity, smaller size and chemical plasticity are considered to be very, very beneficial um, by overcoming all the limitations that we saw in conventional therapies. So not only that, even tissue engineering, regeneration medicine has is playing a significant role in biotechnology techniques also. And of course, NGS or DNA sequencing technology is also going to play a major role. So these are some of the technologies or techniques that is going to make up the market. So the next one is, if I'm going to talk about all the fields, you can see here, it's playing a greater role in health, food and agriculture, food science graduates also, natural resources, even environment, industrial processing, bioinformatics, and in many, many other applications. So it is taking up the market. So I'm going to list out some of the uh, fields that you can uh, go in for like bioprocess engineering, biomedical engineering, forensic science, beverage industry or fermentation industry, stem cell industry, genetic technology, food technology, nutrition and dietetics, and of course, bioremediations. So microbiology is playing a market and why you have to pursue a career in biotechnology, I'm going to tell you. So what are the things that you have to take into consideration? The first important thing we know it's going to be interdisciplinary field. So you can take up a fields either in biology, chemistry, physics or mathematics. You can go for any other fields. And the second thing is it has scientific sectors and even you can go for administrative sectors. If you're not interested in uh, research, then definitely you can uh, go for administrative sectors also. And definitely they have uh, research projects and it's very intellectually challenging when you go for this one and it's financially rewarding also and it's very useful. You can in invent some useful technology in case of agriculture culture, medicine, healthcare, industry and all those things. So now let's talk about the sixth point. So here the six points talks about the salary analysis. So I've listed some of the salary analysis in India as well as in the USA. So first let's talk about in case of India. So if you're going to become a biotechnologist in India, how much you're going to get as an average pay I'm talking about. So almost uh, 5 lakh for one year is going to be the average salary, but it is variable. So I would suggest always that if you're going to have your skill, if you're very good enough in your techniques, you're good enough in analytical solving, then definitely this would be great greater than that but this is the average salary of a biotechnologist in India and this is the average salary globally if I have to talk for skilled graduates which is 73,000 US dollars and this is about the salary analysis and what are the key companies so there are a lot many companies when we talk in case of biotechnology we have a video on separately on Asian countries and entire world and even in India so you can watch out that and I've listed some of the 10 important key companies that have taken um, biotechnology market very specifically according to the survey so AstraZeneca uh, till Novartis you can see these are the companies which has maximum contributed for the biotechnology global markets so I've listed all the companies here so if anybody is looking for an opportunity you can check onto the website next thing comes for us is country scope what are the countries that are contributing to the biotechnology field so of course i've listed india here which is on to the 10th position so us canada germany uk france italy japan china india south korea australia saudi arabia and many other more india usually contributes even in biotech sector so we also started taking up the market i'm going to talk about whether india can become a hotspot of biotechnology later that also i'm going to talk about it the next one is scope and opportunity 
opportunity. So what are the scopes you have if you're going to take up biotechnology? You can become an entrepreneur. It's not necessary. You have to go only for a research. You can become an entrepreneur. You can enter into an academia teaching field. You can go for government sectors and you can become um, enter into intellectual property research, IPR research or patenting research and legal adversary for biotechnology. You can also become a lawyer for a biotechnology companies also and fellow bot botanist filed and you can also take up prosthetic sectors of the medical field. So these are all some of the growing field. We have a separate video on that you can watch out but this is very very important. Now the next question come for us is what is the future of biotechnology? As I already told you there's going to be a gradual growth in 2030 or 2025. Opportunities for employment is there and career aspects in large number is there because there is always a need and there is always a use and there's always a demand for biotechnology. So definitely um, it is having a lot of future. And what about in case of India, the future of biotechnology? It is believed that soon it's going to become the major hotspot for the biotechnology industry in the world. Yes, of course, US or Europe or when we talk in case of Japan or when we talk in case of Germany, they always take up the uh, markets, biotechnology market. Is, bio is India able to come up? Yes, soon it it can be becoming a major hotspot for the biotechnology industry in the world why it is so so there are enormous medicine industry that has a lot of tie-ups with major countries of the world we started having a lot of tie-ups with different countries who are globally uh, contributing and also been the hotspot for biotechnology industry and we have booming agriculture research industry also we have very nice one and medical transfusions and we started doing research on genetics and development and of course we have healthcare industry so all these things are there so we can believe that India can also become um, a hot spot uh, for the biotechnology industry in the upcoming days so this is about the scope of biotechnology if anybody is watching out the video thinking that I've taken biotechnology is it any scope in the upcoming years I'm going to tell you the main purpose of this video is to encourage all of you who are watching out the video who are thinking that biotechnology is going to give a future for you so the main important thing is I've been talking about some of the uh, uh, specializations or the fields or the techniques it's very very important if you're going to learn it definitely not only in India wherever you go by technology Biotechnologist is always a demanding field and biotechnologist has always been welcomed in the entire world. So this is all about the video. Thank you all of you for your time. I'm going to meet you back again with another wonderful video. Thank you all of you.